Welcome to another episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Welcome to my home here in beautiful Lime Bay, where it's a bit overcast. It's if you if you're planning on coming down this weekend, well, I don't know. I will say we've got some plans this weekend. We're off to Centre Parks, which I'm rather looking forward to. We do like a bit of Centre Parks. For those of you that sort of don't live in the UK or don't know what Centre Parks is, it's kind of a big forest and they've got loads of wooden chalets and things. It's really nice. There's lots of entertainment. There's a big pool and everything. It's really good and it's great for the kids. The kids really enjoy it. However, we usually go around Christmas time and it's a bit different this time because we're going sort of in the summer. Well, I say the summer. It's not looking great forecast weather wise. So I'm just hoping it all goes OK. I've got a rabbit who you may hear in the background is in the garden making an awful lot of a, a, a lot of racket. But we'll try and crack on anyway. Thank you for joining me once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows right here at my home on the south coast of the United Kingdom. I'm Brett, I'm your host for our nighttime podcast. Welcome to another episode. Please bear in mind we've got Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. They're all called Brett's Old Time Radio Show. And if you could follow me there and maybe just check it out, give us a like and things, be appreciated. Got a supporter page, which is patreon.com forward slash Brett's Old Time Radio Show. So if you get a minute, go and check it out. We love that. Right, with it being a Wednesday, it's time for our latest adventure from Rocky Jordan. This one was first broadcast on the 19th of June, 1949. It's called The Big Ditch. Time now for Rocky Jordan. Not far from the mosque Sultan Hassan in Cairo stands the Café Tambourine, run by Rocky Jordan. The Café Tambourine, crowded with forgotten men, alive with the babble of many languages. For this is Cairo, where modern adventure and intrigue unfold against the backdrop of antiquity. Tonight's story, The Big Ditch. Maybe there's a reason why I happen to settle down in Cairo. Maybe because it's on a great river like the Mississippi that flows down past St. Louis. Only the Nile's somehow different. Egypt lives by its rise and fall. And when it starts to run low in summer, the spirits of the people seem to go down with it. That includes me. And the best thing to give me a lift is to see an old friend. Even a guy like Matt Gallagher. I'd had a big Saturday night in the tambourine, and along about 11 in the morning, I got the receipts out of the safe and sat down to front table where I could be under a fan while counting up. I was just finished when there was a knock at the door. I shoved the money bag under the counter. As I threw the latch on the door, I saw his face through the window. It hadn't changed much in five years, except for a few new scars picked up in some waterfront brawls. He barged in like a big battered freighter riding out a storm. <laughs> Well, uh, Rocky, me boy, the saint be praised. Well, what wind blew you in, Matt? A good wind it was, lad, for the sight of you again. Let's see, now, where was it? Uh, uh, Calcutta, Frisco, Singapore? Oh, don't make me remember. <laughs> if you're thinking of the set to we had with the Sultan's daughter in Istanbul, we rode it out, didn't we, lad? Sure. Uh, by the way, how much money did I loan you to get out of town? Uh, uh, bygones, Rocky, bygones. Come now, uh, set me up with a nip, will you? Sure, just add it to your bill. Yeah, that's an idea. Hey, now bring it around the bar for me, lad. We'll be drinking to all times. Uh, just leave a little of the cash customers, huh? yeah, Never worry, me lad, never worry. One day you'll be marking my account paid in full. And, and plenty to boot. Yeah, and I won't hold my breath till then. Rocky, there are two of us. Yeah. That calls for another, eh? All right, just one more. You two this time. Yeah, I got an answer to that, lad. To Francie Bayon, as lovely a lady as ever set her dainty feet on the streets of Cairo. Who? Uh, up with it now, Rocky. Don't be insulting the lady. All right. <laughs> Who's Francie? Not a new girlfriend. Aye, aye, sir. And there'll never be another. With eyes as blue as the lakes of Killarney. Uh, you never learn, do you, Matt? Oh, Rocky, I know what you're thinking. But never again. This is the real thing. 
Now, tell me, when did a girl ever come into your life that there wasn't trouble? Lad, I won't have you saying that about Francie. She ain't like the others. Sure, okay, okay. You say uh, Baby Blue Eyes is here in Cairo? At the Shadrach Hotel, pining her heart out for me at this very minute. Oh, there's nobody like her, me lad. You got it bad again. Aye, and we'll be settling down if all goes well. And that's what I'm wanting to talk to you about. Okay. How much? Well, the fact of the matter is this, that it, uh, I, I, I will be needing a little money. I wondered when you'd get around to it. But it, you don't understand, lad. I'm cutting you in. On what? Rocky, how would you like to own the Suez Canal? <laughs> Great. How about it, lad? The Suez? Sure. <laughs> I'll put it right alongside the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, you, you think I'm lying to you? Uh, no more than usual. But I'm telling you, Rocky... Look, I... Matt, this is a touch, and we both know it. It's nothing of the kind. You only show up once every four or five years, but every time I end up with less money. Now, come on, how much do you want? Ah, uh, now, that's more like it, me, lad. Uh, uh, 150 pounds will swing it. Uh, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'll let you have 20. Only 20 pounds? But the deal, lad. You're lucky I had a good night. I tell you, it's a touch now, Rocky. All right, call it a wedding present, then. Yeah. Well, you want it or not? I'll take it. But are you... Uh, I may have a phone in my office. I'll be right back. I'll be waiting, Rocky. You can later that. It was a call asking for a contribution to the home for indigent goat herders. Oh, I brushed it off naturally and went back front. First thing I noticed was that Gallagher was gone. Second, he'd taken the bottle from the table with him. That's when I made for the money bag behind the bar. Oh, it was there. And so were a few loose piastres. But that was all. I yanked the front door open, but the street was deserted. Matt Gallagher had made a smoother getaway than the super chief. The little figuring told me that along with the 20 I'd given him, he'd gotten off with a total of 150 Egyptian pounds, which comes to exactly 600 good round American dollars. Well, that's what you get for helping a guy. I don't like being suckered, so I didn't tell anybody, just waited around. He didn't turn up among the other million and a half people around Cairo, so I decided he'd lit out for places unknown. I was sure of it after a couple of weeks went by, but I still hadn't cooled off. Then I got a call from Captain Sam Sabaya. Jordan, is it possible that you know a man named Matt Gallagher? Sure I know him, Sam, and I'm looking for him. Indeed? For what purpose? I'm going to dig 150 pounds out of his hide that he owes me. I fear you will have trouble collecting, Jordan. Yeah? Why? Come to the morgue and you will see. Matt Gallagher is on his slab. Well, I can't stay sore at a guy on a slab. I wanted it over with and forgotten, so I caught the first cab that came along for headquarters. Sam was waiting for me and led me downstairs to the morgue where he drew back one of the sheets. Gunshots, as you can see, Jordan. Uh, where'd you find him, Sam? Lying in some out-of-the-way ruins near the old uh, Babylon Roman fortress in the old part of the city. He had been dead for several days. How'd you happen to call me? A match pack from the cafe tambourine was in his pocket. There was this small chance you might have seen him there. I've known Gallagher off and on for a long time. When did you see him last? A couple of Sundays ago at my cafe. He, uh... Borrowed a pocket full of money while I wasn't looking. And you did not report this to me, Jordan? Oh, it was a personal affair. Personal affair, indeed. Too often you take matters into your own hand, but someday you will learn. Sure, sure. Uh, what else was in his pocket, Sam? There was no money, if that is what you mean. What about identification? You know, this passport and Seaman's card. You may see them if you like. Thanks. Also, a few other personal articles, if you care to look at them. Oh, I don't know. I've seen enough. Now, Jordan, if there is anything more you can tell me about this man... Nothing at all, Sam. He's all yours. Very well. But, Jordan, give it some thought. I intend that this murder be disposed of very quickly. I could feel Sam's eyes on the back of my head as I went out. He generally figures I'm holding something back. And this time he was right. To begin with, I'd never seen that man on the slab before. It wasn't Matt Gallagher at all. Besides, Gallagher was a seaman. 
And this was a fair-skinned man with soft hands that had never done a lick of rough work in his life. And I wondered if Sam had noticed that. Well, I had a hunch now that Gallagher was still kicking around Cairo with my 150 pounds. And I wanted first crack at him. What he had to do with the murder and the switch in identity was anybody's guess. Looking in on Matt's girlfriend at the Shadrach Hotel was one thing I'd avoided up to now. But this is where I had to see her. It turned out she was sharing a suite with somebody, so I got the room number and went on up. The door was opened by a friendly-looking little guy with a mustache and his gray hair parted in the middle. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, what can I do for you? I'd like to see Francie Bjorn. Name's Jordan. Oh, of course, of course. Please come in. Thanks. Who is it, Uncle Julius? It's Mr. Jordan, Francie. Oh, so you're Rocky Jordan. That's right. Matt Gallagher mentioned my name? Yes. Bosom pals, he said. A big oaf. Yeah. Uh, Francie, perhaps Mr. Jordan will be able to tell us... Give him time, Uncle dear. Oh, uh, yes, of course, of course, uh, my dear. Well? I'm looking for Gallagher. Where is he? (laughs) I haven't seen him for weeks. What's your guess? From what he told me, you ought to know everything about him. What did he tell you? Oh, something about you and him settling down. Real cozy. (laughs) Fine chance. He'd better show up in a hurry, that's all I got to say. What's he up to, Francie? He's up to his gills in Irish whiskey, if you ask me. Yeah, what else? Oh, I don't know. He's been acting crazy for the last month. A lot of wild talk. Brother, what he wasn't going to do for me, buy me minks and sables and yachts... Did he say what with? (laughs) Who cares? It wouldn't make sense. What do you want with him? 150 pounds, due and payable. Did he steal it from you? Well, he didn't exactly sign a promissory note. Uh, Francie, my dear, this is just as I told you. I expressly do not approve of that man for you. We've been all over that, Uncle Julius. But a girl of your culture and refinement, I cannot understand what you see in a person like that. Then stop trying. Where do I look for him, Francie? You might take a swim in the Suez Canal. He says he's going to buy it. Oh. Gallagher told you that, too, huh? (laughs) That's what he's telling everybody. And the more he talks, the crazier he gets. All he needs is a little dough to swing it, he says. And it's big times for us. <laughs> Can you beat that guy? Well, let me know when he shows up, will you? Better be in a hurry. We're washing out of this town plenty quick. Okay, thanks. Don't mention it. Oh, Mr. Jordan. Hmm? Mr. Jordan. Yeah, Julius? Uh, about this uh, robbery. Have you mentioned it to the police? Not yet. Why? Well, it's for Francie's sake. She's such a sensitive child. Well, don't worry, Julius. What I've got to settle with Matt Gallagher is between just him and me. I finally shook Uncle Julius from my lapels, got out of the Shadrach Hotel, and back to my tambourine. As I walked into the cafe, Chris flagged me down from behind the bar and handed over a package wrapped in old dirty paper. It's for you, Rocky. What is it? I don't know. Messenger said he was supposed to give it to you personal. Only got tired waiting. And he say who it was from? Yeah, Matt Gallagher. Gallagher? Let's have a look. It ain't wrapped up so good. Uh, I'm interested in what's inside. Oh, careful. It's coming apart. No, oh, here. Help me here, will you, Chris? Yeah. Great jumping Jehoshaphat, Rocky. What's that? The bundle had come apart in my hands, and a lot of strange-looking pieces of paper lay scattered all around me. While Chris was getting them together, I picked one up and had a look. Like all the rest, it was old-looking and yellow with everything written in French. At the top, in real fancy lettering, it read, Compagnie Universelle du Canal Maritime de Suez. I began scrambling through the others, and they were all the same, except for a different serial number. I didn't need to know much French to realize that these were shares of stock. Yeah? From where I stood, I, Rocky Jordan, now own part of the Suez Canal. You are listening to The Big Ditch, an adventure with Rocky Jordan. You'll find mystery to your heart's content on CBS, fine yarns woven by some of radio's top mystery writers. But you can also vary the fare with music and comedy. Here's a comedy you won't want to miss. Monday night, on CBS Radio Theater, Mickey Rooney stars in Merton of the Movies, a satire on the movie-making industry. 
Remember, CBS Radio Theater tomorrow, Monday night at 6. Now we return you to Cairo and tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan, The Big Ditch. What would you do if somebody sent you a whole stack of shares in the Suez Canal? Paper the wall with them or ask a few questions first? Well, my curiosity got the best of me, too, so I wrapped up the bundle again and headed for the Cairo Securities Exchange. I didn't expect to find the answer there to why a murdered man was found with Matt Gallagher's identification on him, or why Gallagher had sent the shares to me. That was something else. I finally got to the right man at the exchange, gave him my name, opened up the bundle on his desk, and waited for him to start laughing. Yes, Mr. Jordan? Oh, what about these things? Hmm... It's the Company Universal de Suez. I say, Mr. Jordan. Yeah? Uh, this is most remarkable. You're bringing such valuable securities in this fashion. Now, wait a minute. Don't tell me they're the real thing. Authentic in every detail. I've seen many of these. The man is indeed fortunate to possess Suez Canal shares. But what are they doing here? A big pardon. I mean, doesn't the Suez belong to a government? France or England? Oh, a common error, Mr. Jordan. True, the British Crown owns seven sixteenths of the Suez Canal, thanks, of course, to the brilliant statesmanship of Disraeli when he purchased them from the Khedive of Egypt. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. A uh, great man, Disraeli. A credit to the empire, Mr. Jordan. Uh, look, getting back to these shares. Oh, oh, oh quite. <laughs> Carried away, you know. Sorry. Um, are you trying to tell me that private individuals can own shares in the Suez Canal? Most assuredly. Many people are fortunate to own stock in the Suez. Uh, the fact of it is, thousands of shares have been lost through the years. The company is nearing its century mark, you know. Well, how much are they worth? Uh, they sold originally for 250 pounds a share. They now run as high as 20,000 pounds. Each? Yes, you have 200 shares here. It's possible that dividends have accumulated. All in all, these are worth, uh, in your currency... Approximately uh, $16 million. May I ask where you got them? I bought them for 150 pounds. Oh, I see, Mr. Jordan, you're pulling my leg. No, I wouldn't dare. Uh, now, now, of course, these must be transferred to your name. Oh, yeah, sure, but uh, some other time. Uh, you mean you're taking them with you in this manner? Yeah, thanks for everything. Uh, but why? I've decided to get my money back. I put the bundle inside my coat and came out of there with a great education on the Suez Canal. Enough to know that there was a sweet setup for a neat little racket. Only it gets too big when a man's murdered and the stuff's planted on me. And right then I knew I had to find Gallagher and shove the whole bundle down his throat. It was already evening and I moved along the street, not noticing the beggars or anything else. The little native water salesman started getting under my feet. Effendi, I have the pure fine water for you. Water like crystal. All right, move along. Him, she. Oh, but it is not of the Nile, Effendi. My water is from the hidden springs of the desert. One piaster is all. Hello, your cheek. What's good now? Uh, two centimes, then. Only for you. No water. Him, she. Uh, Mr. Jordan. Where'd you learn the name? This concerns another matter. The Afranki would be wise to listen. All right, get it out. Mr. Jordan, there are certain people with money. They will bargain well. What people? What do they want? I cannot tell you who they are, but they are interested in certain pieces of paper. Well, you tell certain people that certain pieces of paper aren't for sale. Get it? Alwa Effendi. Uh, do you know where Matt Gallagher is? The name I do not know. Yeah. This help? Uh, but perhaps there is another who can help you. Who? The street of many knives up the hill past the rug weaver's hut. I'll need more than that. I have the water. Hey, wait a minute. Very pure water, like fine crystal water. I could have followed the water cellar, but already night was setting in and I had another errand. It took a lot of asking around and some strange looks, but I was finally in the street of many knives. Nothing more than a passageway that winds up through the desolate native quarter to the east. It's a place a foreigner doesn't go around, even in daylight, much less at night. And I could guess how it got its name. The wild dogs were out, but they'd found something else and didn't bother with me. Just before the street ended at a hill, I found the rug weaver's hut and the door just beyond. 
was no light, but I knocked. I thought I heard a quick movement inside. So I knocked again. I tried the knob. It was locked. I put my shoulder against the door and one shove was all it took. The lock snapped and I was inside just as a hulking figure lunged from the shadows. He had powerful arms around me and we went down. My knees came up and we went on over. Then I was on top with my hand in his face. And Matt and the smell of Irish whiskey cut it short. Matt! Rocky. Rocky, lad, I, I didn't know. How'd you find me? Yeah, we'll skip that. Oh, let's get some light in here. There's a candle on a corner table. But you have to light it now, lad. Why not? Oh, Rocky, boy, am I glad to see you. Yeah, you won't be, Matt. Not till you hand over my money. Oh, no, 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 Rocky, lad. Go easy on me. I've been in for a rough time of it. Why the hideout? Well, I'll admit it to you, Rocky. I'm scared. Of what? The police? Uh, not exactly. But I, I'm in a bit of trouble. Why not run to Francie? She's getting out of Cairo. Well, uh, I, I tell you, lad, I, I'm giving her up. Francie's too good for the likes of me. Uh, anyhow, I've learned me lesson, Rocky. There's been a bit of strike north of Johannesburg. I'm going there and dig for gold. Come on with me now. I'll start clearing it up, Matt. What about the guy down on the morgue? Uh, in, in the morgue? You know he's dead. He was carrying your seaman's card and your passport. Sure. Sure, I, I know. But you don't think I killed him, lad. You couldn't think that. I, I value life too much. Spit it out, Gallagher. Who was he? Uh, Walter Logan. He used to work for the Suez Company in Paris. Did you get all those shares from him? Right, me boy. He offered a quick sale for 150 pounds. Well, they'd be worth thousands. Why a price like that? Now, Rocky, you know I don't bother with trifles. Ask a lot of embarrassing questions. Go on. We had a little rendezvous and I bought the shares. I left him and I wasn't more than a block away and I heard the gunshots. I ran back and found him dead. See anybody else around? No, Rocky. But I knew people would be accusing me. They always make things tough and poor, Matt Gallagher. Come on, come on. Why the switch? Well, I had to think fast. If they thought I was dead, they wouldn't be looking for me. So I put my stuff in his pockets. And why send the shares to me? That was our deal, Rocky. Anyhow, uh... I was sort of hot, and I knew you'd take care of them. Yeah. All that over a stack of worthless paper. Worthless? What do you mean, Rocky? A lot of Suez shares have been lost. Nobody knows what happened to them. You say Logan worked for the company in Paris. He could have found out the serial numbers of the missing shares, made up some to match the real ones. Counterfeit? Sure. He turns up with a bunch of lost shares, and if he's lucky, no one's the wiser. Only, he wasn't so lucky. What now, then, lad? I still want my 150 pounds. But, Rocky, I'd give it to you if I had it. Hey, hold it, Matt, hold it. Yes. Maybe I heard, or maybe I just felt it, but I knew there was somebody at the door. As I opened it, a barefoot native ducked away. I was after him fast, and just as I was on him, he whirled and faced me. Mr. Jordan. All right, what is it now, Buster? You don't sell water around here. Uh, no, it concerns the other matter, Effendi. Uh, you ready to tell me who sent you? I cannot. Uh, but about the certain pieces of paper, uh, my master offers you... Five thousand pounds. Uh, is that all? Oh, but Mr. Jordan, he is prepared to go higher. Uh, possibly six or seven thousand pounds. I'll go the other way. The other way? Yeah. Tell your master he can have the pieces of paper for 150 pounds. You will give them to me? Not on your life. I'll deliver them in person. Well, I meet your master. At the ruins of the Minya Tower in Old Cairo. Uh, there you will not be disturbed. I'll be there at 11 o'clock. The little water cellar vanished in thin air, and I was back dragging Gallagher into the street and down the hill. I figured as long as he'd started this thing for me, he could be in at the finish. He complained like a dyspeptic camel all the way, but I finally got him with me to the tambourine, and there I put in a quick call to Sabaya. What are you trying to say to me, Georgia? I told you, the guy you have in the morgue isn't Matt Gallagher. But you saw him yourself. Why did you not tell me? You didn't ask me, Sam. I didn't. You, of all the incredible... Then who is this man? His name's Walter Logan. Jordan, listen to me. You have completely upset my investigation. You have come dangerously... Sam, close. do you want to find Gallagher or not? Indeed I do. Then put on your snowshoes and mush on out to the Minya Tower in Old Cairo. Jordan, you will first explain this to me, Jordan. See you there, Sam. Gallagher heard every word of the conversation and he was crying real tears as I tucked the pieces of paper under my arm and shoved him into a taxi out front. 
Between him and the lazy taxi driver, I had myself a time as we rolled south into old Cairo. Finally, we drove through what once, centuries ago, was the gate to the Roman fortress called Babylon. A little farther on, the cabbie pulled up and he wouldn't go an inch farther for all the fish in the Nile. So we walked it from there. In another quarter hour, we were nearing the crumbling Minya Tower, surrounded by ruins. Just a few minutes before 11. A full moon was out now, almost white against the ancient sandstone walls. It was quite a sight, but Gallagher wasn't impressed. Rocky. Rocky, I, I don't like it at all. Ah, we're early. There's nobody here. It's right there that Walter Logan was killed, don't you see? Yeah. Somebody might repeat themselves. Look, Rocky, this is not for me. Let's get out of here. I, I'm sorry for getting you into this land. I'll make it up if it takes the rest of my life. Might not be long enough, Matt. Now, Rocky, me boy, that's exactly get back what in I the mean. Shadows. We'll wait here. Matt dug for a dark corner and we waited. Not more than three or four minutes. And we heard footsteps along the passageway from the way we'd come. Whoever it was kept to the shadows on the far side. The steps were confident with no trace of hesitation. Past. And then the figure stepped out into the moonlight beneath a tower. Francie! Matt, what are you doing here? It came with me, Francie. Gallagher's in on the deal. All right, let's get it over with. Oh, I don't understand it. I don't understand it at all. When did that muddled head of yours ever understand anything? But all this time you... Yes, better... playing you for a sucker. Francie, darling. Oh, no, no, Let no. Let Rocky I... explain it. He's the smart one. Uh, later. Your little water boy mentioned an offer for... Uh... Certain pieces of paper. 5,000 pounds. Why did you make it 150? I'm satisfied. You have them? Yeah. All right, give them to me. Oh, let's keep it honest, Blue Eyes. Hmm. Here's your money. Now hand them over. They're all yours. Thanks. Now we'll get a few things straight. Skip it, Rocky. Come on out, Julius. Yes, I'll take over now, Francie. Julius. It's Uncle Julius. I've been wanting... Careful, Matt. That gun in his hand, he'll use it. You're quite right, Mr. Jordan. Oh, I'm getting it now. I should have known why you didn't like me, Uncle Julius. Always come between Francie and me. What's bothering you, Julius? Matt and I know too much. You've still got a lot of phony shares to sell. You could quite well interfere with our plans. So I'm going to kill you. Just like you did Walter Logan. Yes. Well, he fixed you up with his stuff. Why drop him? He was a little man. Our methods frightened him began trying to dump the shares at quick prices. There was no telling what he would do next. I had to kill him. That leaves just you and Francie. Great team. I give her full credit. It was she who masterminded our plan. It ain't true. It ain't true at all. I'll not have you saying that about Francie. Shut up, you stupid ox. You forced her into it. You never liked me. And I don't like you either, Julius. Matt, keep back. You'll be poisoning her mind against me no more. Stop, you fool. Stop. You or nobody can stop Matt Gallagher. <laughs> Matt stopped two slugs head on and kept walking in. Then his big gnarled hands were on the man's neck and dropped him back. <laughs> Julius had no more chance than a day old kitten. All at once it was a snap and he dropped like a wet bar rag. Matt stood over him for a full second and then he piled on top. <laughs> Francie was suddenly wild and running. And I didn't follow because just then I saw Sam Sabaya and a couple of his men coming up to meet her. Well, there was a lot of talk and explaining for a while. Then Uncle Julius was wheeled off to the morgue, Matt Gallagher to the hospital, and Francie off to a cell. Sam kept the package. And about an hour later, he and I were resting at a table in my cafe tambourine. Jordan, you, you make very good coffee. Sounds that way, Sam. Mm. You should confine your activities to just such things as this. Oh, I'm willing. But when a poor sucker like Gallagher comes around, what are you going to do? It is possible there will not be another time. Uh, <laughs> takes more than a couple of slugs to knock out a guy like him. What Francie did to him will hurt him worse. Mm, perhaps. By the way, Jordan, I'm wondering now what I should do about you. Me? What for? You are guilty of selling counterfeit shares for 150 pounds. I, uh, 
I think it's about time you looked in that package, Sam. What do you mean? My deal with Francie was for certain pieces of paper. That's just what she got. All torn out of the Cairo Gazette. It's CBS at this same time next week for another story of adventure and intrigue when we take you back to Cairo and the Cafe Tambourine run by Rocky Jordan. Rocky Jordan, written by Larry Roman and Gomer Cool, stars Jack Moyles in the title role and is produced and directed by Cliff Howell with original music by Richard Arant. Larry Thor speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed our latest adventure with Rocky Jordan. And don't forget, we'll be back with more adventures and more intrigue tomorrow with Tales of the Texas Rangers going live at 5 p.m. GMT. You can email me on brett at tourdate.co.uk and I'd love to know your thoughts on the show. And as I mentioned earlier, I've got a supporter page. You'll find a bunch of extra content, shows and different bits and pieces. Check out patreon.com forward slash brett's old time radio show. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week, and I'll see you tomorrow on Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye.